And do you feel like you've increased your faith walk or where do you stand now making a project like this? When I am tasked with portraying Jesus to the world, it's very important that you know him as well as possible. Uh, so uh, yeah, I've been a believer my whole life, but I also recognize that a large part of our audience may not be. So I'm trying to make sure that for my own purposes and for the purposes of the show, that I'm accurately portraying who Jesus is, uh, but also making sure that I'm doing it in a way that uh, also recognizes that for some people it's it's a historical drama. But for me personally, I'm making sure that over the last couple of years, as I have looked through the Gospels and as I have studied the historical context and the cultural context, that it's getting even deeper into my heart and into my life. And one of the things that I've really noticed more than anything else is that Jesus, uh, when he was here on earth, was very personal. He was very intimate. We oftentimes think of him on stained glass windows or as statues, or uh, we think of him as speaking to the masses. But more than anything else, he was speaking to people on an individual level. He knew exactly what was in their hearts and what they needed. And that's been something that has really, uh, I think, gotten to me more than ever over the last couple of years and has uh, certainly benefited and, and grown uh, me significantly. So now do you feel like this is the best time to tell his story? Well, I think there's always a good time to tell the story of Jesus. But I do feel like the last few years have been a perfect storm and I think that's one of the reasons why The Chosen has had the impact that it has, is that we are more uh, tribal than ever. We are more divided than ever. We are experiencing uh, many things that they experienced 2,000 years ago. And of course, as I talk to you right now, we're 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 seeing what's happening in the Middle East. It's It's heightened more than it even normally is. And so that, I think, calls for... Uh, many times projects like media, you know, sometimes you look to entertainment and media for things of hope and an uplift. And oftentimes you don't get it. And I think a show like The Chosen can provide some of that by saying, hey, they went through this 2000 years ago, oppression, violence, tribalism, social, political, religious division. And there were some answers for that. And there was hope for that. And some of that may actually apply today. I mean, now it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you're headed to theaters. Can you tell people exactly what to expect? Yeah, so season four, one of the reasons why we are releasing all of the episodes in theaters this time around is because this season demands to be seen not only on a big screen, but with other people. Uh, I think you're going to need some comfort. <laughs> there, there's uh, there's things during this season uh, as as the story gets increasingly closer to Jerusalem, to the time of Jesus's death, that uh, the weight increases, the division, the resistance increase, and therefore some of the sadness increases. Now, of course, as always, we've got some joy, we've got some excitement. Uh, there's certainly going to be many moments where you're laughing, where you're happy, where you're uh, feeling optimism, but there's also some weight and some sadness this season um, on a big scale. Um, the, against a big backdrop. So we really want you to experience with a big screen and the surround sound, it's going to be very immersive, um, but it's also going to be immersive emotionally. And uh, I think it might be good to see it with a crowd. So basically bring your church small group, or if you are you don't have one, you need to become one in the theater. Yeah, if, if you're not part of a community uh, and, and you're going to even going by yourself or with